Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Oamine Shwajaulu, and welcome back to another episode of To Hell and Back. Today, we have the gorgeous, we have the sweet, forever smiling, <laughs> Valerie, who I love to call Lady V, by the way. Oh, wow. Thank you for that intro. Are you shy? Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm feeling shy now. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, thanks. And how are you? I'm fine, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited to be here today. I mean, you're welcome, but I'm the one that's supposed to be thanking you uh, for coming here. But you're welcome. Anyway, let me play yeah. it cool. You know, you're welcome. Uh, thank you're you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. But very anyway, much. I, I want us to just dive right into this um, video. Mm -hmm. Can you please just start off by introducing yourself? Okay, so my name is Valerie Mutambi and I am a mother to a young boy and I am not sure exactly what to call myself. Um, a married woman currently going through a divorce. I don't know what to call the in-between stage there. Um, and I am a fashion designer who had to halt a bit because of some challenges that I came across in my life and also a businesswoman and um, a uh, fitness fanatic, you could also add that. <laughs> yeah. She is. <laughs> and uh, very much of a health fanatic also. And um, yeah, last one, a YouTuber. <laughs> a part-time part YouTuber. YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, who is trying to move to posting once a month from six, once in six months. Yeah. So I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, guys, the links to the channels will be in the description box down below. So you can yeah. go and subscribe and wait for that one month to get that one video. <laughs> yeah, I guess when time allows, maybe we'll do two. We'll two or two. three. Yeah. Or four or six. You know. <laughs> the content is there. Yeah. It's just the editing time. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a lot. Yeah. People think it's easy, hey? It's not. Up until you're there. Uh, it's not. Yeah. Four hours for a 17-minute video. Wow. <laughs> it's bad. It's a lot. I mean, I do quicker than that because I'm yeah, used to it. Mm, yeah, yeah, but anyway, okay. Yes. So you did actually say that you are married, going through a divorce. You don't know what. I also don't know what, what to call that phase. In between. That in between. So maybe you're in between marriage. Please tell me, like, yeah, what, what, like, um, what happened? Why are you getting a divorce? Sure, a lot happened. Eh? Um, the long and short of it is, um, I was in a, uh, you could say, an abusive marriage, and also infidelity was part of it, um, which resulted in a my hand getting broken. So that I think was the last straw where I thought, okay, you know what, I will die here. Mm -hmm. And um, I still have my son to live for. So I think it's time. In fact, it wasn't like time. It was more like get out <laughs> yeah. while you still can, you know. So that's, I don't know what else I'll say. It's a lot. <laughs> okay, so, it's okay, lot. it's fine. We're going to dissect it. It's okay. okay. Um, how long were you married for? Uh, from 2020, just before COVID. And I then moved out um, to 2002. No, sorry. 2020. 2022. 2022. Yeah, okay. 2022. That's when I moved out. And um, yeah, we've been separated since. And then I filed for divorce. Um, in September last year, and it's been dragging, so... September last year? Yeah. Oh, you know, divorce takes a bit of time. Sure. It does, it drags. It's, it's, it's almost a year, eh? I know. It's actually past a year. Yeah, it does that. Sure. But I, I, I hope that soon it's going to be okay. Yeah, I pray to God. Like, I want that chapter of my life to just be closed because, wow. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. 
<laughs> I mean, we're not laughing, but yeah, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, how long were you with your ex-husband? Uh, from 2018. Okay. That's when we met. Mm-hmm. And uh, we dated, and then he decided he wanted to make me his wife. In fact, he told me on our first date Mm -hmm. that um, he is actually going to marry me. But, you know, I'm just thinking, like any other guy who you go out on a date with. Especially this love scam. You know, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, "Ah, there's no way. He's just saying that um, he doesn't even know me. He's just seeing me for the first time, you know. And... um, then the love bombing started, you know, and I'm thinking, whoa, who, 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 which one is this one now? <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, things are escalating really quickly here, mm-hmm. and um, got me a bit worrisome. And I remember just sharing with my sisters, like, hey, like this guy is too much, man. Yo, he's too much. And at some point, he'd even say to himself, you know, I am a bit too much. You know, some people might think this and that. So I'm like, okay, so he's aware of it. So this is not unusual But for wait, him. just for, for you to elaborate a bit, when you say too much, what do you mean? Was he constantly calling? Was he constantly wanting to be with you? Yes. Okay. Always wanted to be with me. Always wanted to see me every day. Um, always checking up on me. Uh, always gifting me, always showering with gifts. Um, so much in such a spo- uh, short space of time. And um, I used to think to myself, how long will he be able to keep this up for? But dude, let me tell you, the guy was consistent. Wow. And to a point that I started actually believing it, that, you know what, um, this is who he is and maybe he always wanted to be with me was because really i am the only girl you know and he or he just wants to be with me he didn't seem like anybody who had time for anything else except for me okay and i was the busy one oh okay and um because i was running my own business and um we don't have work hours i mean yeah. we work around the clock so I'd get to a point that I would allow him to actually come to my office wherein he'd actually just sit there while we're working. Was he not working? He was. Uh, after when he uh, knocks off, he okay. would actually come to my workplace and sit there and um, just hang out while we're working. So he's, uh, I thought that was, I think, okay, only when I'm now here, I realized that was a way of him trying to study me. Like, okay, this is her life, her circle. Maybe when she's saying she's too busy, who else is she seeing? You know, things like that. Um, at that time, I thought, yo, he really just can't get enough of me, you know? And I felt so special, you know? Like somebody who never tires of you. You know, I sometimes get tired of myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we sleep. <laughs> yeah, you know, but he just always wanted to be with me. And I thought, okay. And I remember I was sitting and talking to my friends, and they're like, I mean, you wanted a guy who gave you attention. I mean, you can't always have it to the point, to the exact measurement of how you want it. And sometimes it is going to be like a little bit too much or a little bit less. So pick your, pick which one it is that you want, you know? And um, my one sister was like, you know what? Um, he is giving you all the time. I'm sure you really are the only person. Because we're always doubting, like, is yeah. this, you know? And what else are you looking for if you are complaining it's too much? What is it that you want? Because it's either it's non-existent or it's too much, you know? So I decided to go, like, you know what, I'll get used to this. And, um, yeah, I got used to it. And it continued that way. And um, I fell in love also. And yeah, eventually he's like, okay, let's get married. So from 2018 to 2020, he was like the love bombing, like everything. Consistently. So I don't think we should call it love bombing. I guess that like, let's just say he was, because you know love bombing, I think is when somebody does that and then maybe within a week or two, it's done. No, you they, know, they so continue for some time until when the mask actually starts coming off. That's when it starts becoming a bit tricky. When did the mask start coming off? Oh, it was in the marriage. How how far into the marriage? Towards the end. uh, Okay, actually, um, I could say that 
the first time I noticed something was a bit off was I think three four months into the marriage when a call came in um, and here's the thing my husband's phone never rang when okay. we at home and him always being with me always being at home I got into a point that I believe he really doesn't have friends doesn't have people that talk to him and people that do call it's just the sister here and there the mother here and there and that's it mm-hmm. And it never rang and it never, it was never like a red flag for me or why doesn't this person's phone never ring? Only he makes calls. And um, we're coming back from work, then a call comes in and he answers his phone and he starts talking and then he hangs up and it makes it seem like um, it got cut off. Then he calls back that person. And he starts talking about potatoes and some produce and how I can assist you. This And I'm like, no, that sounded like a woman. And that didn't sound like the initial call. But, hey, man, you know, I know it's nothing, you know. And ah, I continued and the call went on until we got home. They continued talking. I got busy, started cooking. So yeah, even if I wanted to ask about that call, the duration was so long that we got so busy that I couldn't continue. But I was just like... You know, Elu and I, you love, you love news, you know? Because I'm like, why did it sound a bit like this? And then now, who are you talking to, mm-hmm. you know? But not suspicious. It was just a bit offish, yeah. you know? And I let it go like that. And um, I remember this one time, um, I was coming back from work. And remember, he called to me. He's like, listen, love, we, I'm coming back home. So let's live together. We'll get home together. So he leaves his place, I leave uh, my shop. That time I was not at the shop. And when I got home, he's not there. And I'm not a person who's going to call and check up on you. Where are you? Because I believe maybe traffic, yeah. something. I'm, I'm not a nagging person. Yeah. Let me just put it that way. So I gave him some time. And I think almost an hour, almost two hours later, he rocks up home with a bouquet of flowers and a cake and then he says yo baby this um, guys uh, from this office they called me while i was on my way home and um i went to the office to pick up whatever i picked up and then on my way back i got this i saw these uh, flowers in the garage while i was filling up and i just thought of my beautiful wife and you know and i'm like oh no man <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So how long, like, uh, how long would you say he was basically missing um, from the time you got home and to the time he got home? Uh, almost two hours. Okay. Yeah, almost two hours. So uh, it's almost as if maybe when he was leaving to come home and meet, meet up with me, maybe someone called and then he was like, Eish. maybe I've been waiting for this person for some time. I don't know. It's just, you know, my own... Um, assumption after now discovering what I discovered okay. later that and that day this was off this you know you start picking up the days of things of incidents that happened and yeah. just thinking uh uh-uh. uh here 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 but that time I was just like okay what's happening today okay let it go so maybe let's fast forward mm. the first time that you find out that there's actually infidelity in your marriage Ooh. how did you find out <laughs> Oh, wow. So, how I found out was I, my phone got stolen at work. So, I called him and uh, he told me that, okay, no, you know what, since it's in the middle of the month, I'll get your phone month end, but in the meantime, you can use mine. So, I'll give you yours and then when I, you'll use that small um, phone. So, I was like, okay, cool. So he deletes the stuff, he gives me a clean phone, great. I download my WhatsApp, everything is fine. And then um, a week in, every now and then he'd always ask for my phone, saying I need a contact, some of my contacts are still in your phone. So I would give him, I'm not even thinking anything of it, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, that day, he asked for my phone in the morning, it was a Sunday morning. He asked for my phone, I gave it to him. He was busy with it. And I was busy with breakfast. And when I was serving him the breakfast with a tray, I came up and then I'm giving him the tray. He took the phone and put it on the side, right? And then um, he started eating. After eating, he left, went to his meeting. Great. 
I remained behind, continued working. At some point, I received a call, and then I answered my call. After the call, you know, it showed me the last screen, the last um, page that was on the phone. And I see it says 41 delete messages, and then it says yes, no. And I'm sitting here thinking, it's my WhatsApp. Like, who's deleting messages? Because all my WhatsApps are work. Like, literally everything is work. There's no way I can delete anything because I need traces, right? Mm -hmm. And I then pressed no. But the messages are still checked, right? So I decided to check. Or, but how is my phone deleting this? I, I even forgot he had it, mind you. Why are these messages checked? So I checked the first name. I, the number is not saved on my phone, but it's a picture of a woman. I'm a fashion designer, mind you. So I'm thinking it's one of my customers. But there's a conversation and it's not saved. Usually once I start talking to a, a client, I save the number, right? And then I saw that this conversation is not my conversation. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what's going on here? A relationship is going on and it's not mine. I'm not even thinking, it's anybody in this house. Could someone maybe hacked my phone? So I move on to the next one, another relationship. And I move on to the next one, another, like it's for my love, my love, hey, when can I see you? Can I get to know you? Girl, it's not clicking to me that this is stuff that's happening in your home. I'm just thinking, hey, how, how is this, you know, I'm going down, down. Then I find a place where now he's asking, please send me your picture. And then she also asks for, my, for his picture. And she sends her picture and he sends his picture and he's telling her how beautiful she is. Guess what? I didn't believe that's my husband. I believe that someone is using my husband's picture and trying to propose people that's denial for you on your phone, so on my phone. that no one has access to but except for you and your husband okay you girl know, like you know deny, like i didn't believe because i've never there was no sign except for those two calls which happened a long time ago and i ignored them right so that's happening and i'm thinking i no man who's using my my husband's phone i mean my husband's picture and then the relationship is going so the part that now got me is that as I continued, there are now voice notes with other women. <laughs> Wherein he'll, he actually says, I'm driving, that's why I'm sending you a voice note. And you know, that time I started shaking, like, ah, like this is him. I'm not going like, oh, wow, this is him. I'm like, huh? This is like, I was shaking. How many girls? Were there or how many relationships were there? The numbers, the number of messages that were checked were 41. <gasps> Wait, is that 41 different people? 41 different. My people. goodness. 41 different conversations. With different women. With different people. Oh man. With whoa. And I was shaking. I dropped that phone. Fortunately, it fell on the carpet. And that time, my mind, like, I can't, like, I can't even, I think I couldn't even reason what's going on. It's just like, okay, what's going on? The same guy who kissed me, who just left, and, like, it wasn't making sense to me, you know? And, um, yo, I didn't know what to do. Don't know who to call. It's unbelievable, like, I can't believe it. <laughs> it's almost like you're reliving that experience yeah, even like now. Right now. I'm in that living room, actually shaking the way I was shaking, and when it fell, and I'm just, huh? Okay, what's going on? So then, who is the first person that you actually call? My mom. <laughs> <laughs> they told you, when you get married, don't tell your mother, but no, my mother no. must know. No, and here's the thing, she hasn't answered the phone and I can't get a hold of her, so I, I don't know who else to talk to. Then I'm like, my sister, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we were a, quite a happy couple, I must just mention this. Um, I believed I was in a very loving and beautiful marriage and we never really had problems. 
that mm. even if we did, it was like a small argument about why did you leave your your socks? You know, I mean, it's an early, beautiful young marriage. How many months were you into it was the five marriage? Months into five months. Mu- okay, yeah, okay. Five months into the marriage, and um, I'm thinking, what's going on here? I've never, I don't, I've never told anyone my problems. I've never had anyone to tell. I've never complained about him about anything, you know. So I, I don't have that person who I have that relationship with. That now I'm just sh- stuck. Like, okay, what do I do? And that's when um, eventually I call my sister. Then I tell her like, you won't believe what happened. This is what's going on. Same time I'm talking to her. I'm like, check your WhatsApp now and. I'm screenshotting, sending. Pellet's on my phone. Mm-hmm. And I'm sending, sending to her uh, probably like about, yeah, a few slides, you know. You know the guys who go on Facebook every morning and they are going, hey, Sissy, how are you? May I get to know you? I realized I was married to that guy. I was also married to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I realized I was married oh. to that guy. Mind you, me and him used to have those conversations about yo how annoying people on Facebook are and they will wake up in the morning and a person will propose you for five years. Yes. Even though you're not you're not responding, mind you. But every now and then, ah, you're beautiful, please give me your number. They are consistent, like they don't give up. Here's that guy. And I thought to myself, okay, you know, my sister's to me. What are you going to do? Cause I don't know. I just found out like now. It's like, it's not even three minutes. Like, I'm still in shock, you know? And then she says to me, well, I suggest you sit down, take a moment and decide what is it that you want? How, what outcome do you desire out of all of this? <sighs> and I'm still thinking, now my marriage is over. Like, mm-hmm. that, that was for me. Like, what, what is, what? other way what other thing is there going forward from here like he knows even just yesterday we were talking about cheating like should you cheat this and should i cheat it means we are done and i'm thinking just yesterday's conversation we traveled the whole day it was beautiful and we spoke about so many incidences and how people did us bad he always played that he was um hurt so much by a woman he was cheated on he he was always the one who was hurt. The victim. The victim, you know. And I was sharing my stories too, but I was like, hey, now I walked out when this happened. Now I walked out when this happened. I walked out when this happened. And I'm like, one thing I could never take is cheating. Mm-hmm. So already that we've discussed this, and now it's actively happening less than 24 hours later. I'm just like, God, basically he's saying, because I remember his words. He's like, I believe there's no reason to cheat. Those were his exact words the they day always before. Say that. The day before. So but okay, let's just maybe fast forward a little bit. Mm-hmm. How do you then approach your husband? Okay, so uh, my sister realizes no, Val is probably going through a crazy in her head, and she's like, "I'm going shopping. Join me for shopping." So I said, okay, fine. I join her for shopping. We spend some time together. And then I come back home. She gets me a few spoils. You know, mm-hmm. ice cream and all those things. Mm-hmm. You know, she's the sweetest, by the way. Yeah. And he comes back home. And I don't know how to approach him. Because at the same time, I don't want a fight. And I just wanted to say, okay, since we spoke about this yesterday. And you're cheating. I guess you're saying our marriage is over. You know. And um, there's garbage by the door as he enters the door. I greet him and then I say to him, please go throw the garbage away. And then he says to me, okay, cool. He goes, throws away. And then when he comes back, we had a safety door, like a butler door by the door. And the door is open and I locked the, the butler door. <laughs> Guys, I feel like I'm there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, he comes there and he's like, oh, baby, I'm back. Open the door, you know, because I went into the room because I didn't know how to face him. And then when I got there and I stood and um, I looked at him and he's like, uh, please uh, unlock, it's, it's locked, you know. And I said to him, I know you're cheating on me. You should have seen his face. He went like, no, it's not, it's, it's not what you think. You know, is it oh, oh, with the back? And he's like, open this thing, hope. That guy is huge, ne? 
Mara almost thought he's going to break that butler, right? And I thought, my man is like, it's not supposed to go like this. You're supposed to say, no, I'm sorry. Please, can we talk about this? But it's, no, it's not what you think. Open this door. Open this door. Wait, but... I started getting scared. Oh, but the, uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to uh, find out. Like, the reason for you to have to have a butler locked, mm -hmm. it means that even before, you were scared of this man. No, it wasn't. I just didn't want him maybe trying to hold me and saying, maybe no, um, okay. you know, uh, it's not this. I just wanted us to have a conversation without any contact, you know. Okay. Because um, I wanted to look at him straight in the eye. And he was just like, no, 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 no. Open, open this, open. And I was like, no, I'm not opening. I'm just telling you that we discussed this yesterday. I guess our marriage is over. No, I'm going to take your things now, and I'm going to take them out of the house. And he's like, don't touch my things. Don't touch my things. And guess what? He came and broke the kitchen window. I got so scared. I'm like, that escalated so quickly. <laughs> no, he's violent. And I unlocked the... The butler? The butler, right? By that time, he's now coming over the sink into... Through the, the window? Yes. And I'm shaking and I'm opening. Like, you know, it's, it's taking some time. And then he... As, as he's coming around the corner, that's when I was rushing out. He grabs me. You know, that same time I'm thinking, why are you grabbing me? You are inside the house. Like, you know, the reasoning is like... I felt like now he wants to attack me. Because I'm... Like, there's no reason to attack. We literally had, like, what? A few words, which was... It's not what you think. I know you're cheating. I was not shouting. And he's panicking. And now you're grabbing me. I fell. I fell just... You see, like, the door here? Mm -hmm. I fell just across where my, the half of my body is in front. And he's at the... And he's pulling me. I started screaming, screaming, screaming. And then he eventually lets go. Because now the neighbors can hear. Mm -hmm. I ran so fast. I ran so fast to the security. Because I didn't even look back to see if he's behind me. You know, I'm just so scared. And I get there, I'm like, oh, my husband is attacking me. And, you know, and they're like, what's going on? So they came back with me. I'm thinking, this was not supposed to go like this. I was just asking him, telling him that he's cheating and the marriage is over. And now he's attacking me, you know. And that's when they came there and asked him, um, uh, sir, they found him there and now he's started pecking. He started pecking himself. Okay. Yeah. He started pecking. And it's later that I discovered there were things that he didn't want me to find. Because I got it, there was, we had um, another room where we had a very small storage space in the bedrooms. And um, my, I've got too many clothes. Yeah. So they were fitting into the whole uh, main bedroom wardrobe. And he was using the other room's wardrobe. And he's the one who offered, no, use that side, I'll use this side. And you know, you never check these things. Kanti, things are in there, you know. Things like what? Okay, so when I discovered those things, now I wanted to know like how far is this thing going and what's actually going on. Um, that's when I checked the Facebook and I realized it's Facebook. All the friends were actually women. I've never gone through my husband's Facebook. I've never checked. I've never been, you know, uh, thinking anything is there. Guess what? I discovered he's a single guy on Facebook. I never even knew that um, I never even featured. <laughs> um, because the one time he po posted a picture and it lasted a, a day. And I said, oh, baby, why did you remove that picture? And he said, um, uh, it's a firefighter week. So I decided to put that profile picture of the firefighter to support the firefighter people. Because that picture was put as a background thing. And we're wearing a too much thing. And I'm sure you must have told people Lorena, that was at a wedding or something or with stories because yeah. you know um, because any woman would ask Ore, who's this woman on your profile yeah um, and I'm like Varya how silly were you that you've never been you've never checked your husband's um, Facebook that's because I was so happy and confident thinking there's nothing happening you know and then um, I saw that the Facebook it's 
that conversation in the morning every day without fail. There is good morning. Thank you for accepting my friend my friend request. May I get the pleasure of getting to know you? I know that line too well. Like I cannot forget that line. It was the same every person. No. And then some will will agree, some they'll get to know, some will exchange numbers. Let's move this to WhatsApp like that. And then I realized um, LinkedIn, it was a similar situation. Um, we met on Tinder, by the way. And um, he told me he closed his account the day he met me. And uh, only to realize that, that that account was still very active. The conversations happening there were... I, I remember one which was very funny for me is when he was talking to this woman and how he stays alone in Centurion and how he's cooking, he's cooking chicken and what what. And I remember that day clearly, it was me who was cooking that whole meal and how I'm shopping and I was the one shopping and she's like, yo, you must uh, please invite me for dinner. He took a picture of my food that I served him. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, yeah, ne- hey, yeah, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I was just Abba shocked. Fun. I was shocked. Um, and um, that he's single, he, like this guy was single. Like everywhere he was single, like every person he was speaking to, he was single. And I'm thinking, is he planning to leave me? Uh, what is this? Anyway, he clearly is not happy here. Mind you, I'm the, he's the happiest man to me. He says I'm the best wife in the world. The, hence the spoiling consistently. Because mm-hmm. I'd say, Mara, baby, you don't always have to spoil me. It's like, I don't need a reason to spoil my wife. You don't understand what you've done for me. Hmm. You're my wife, you married me. Hmm. You know, when someone says that to you, you're thinking, wow, I gave him the best gift ever. What? You know? I am the what? gift I'm the that gift. keeps on giving. You know? <laughs> the showering was, n- he would call me like 15 times or more per day, checking up on me, telling me how he misses me. And I'm like, oh, but you just left like an hour ago. And he's like, but you understand, you're my wife and I miss you. And when he's about to come back home, I can't wait to come back to you. Yeah, you know, I felt so loved. So seeing all of that, I don't know if you can understand the yeah, shock. Yeah. You know, considering that you don't even know that he's unhappy. Mm-hmm. He cannot shower you enough because of how happy he is. So the things I found were um, some, uh, you know, sexual enhancers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And uh, these were hit from me um, because there were some that I knew of and he had started a little small business that uh, he was selling these coffees to his colleagues at work and he wasn't taking them um, because, I mean, yeah, there was action but he wasn't having too much action at home. Okay. And I didn't complain much because of the way he treated me, mm-hmm. thinking, you know what, this man loves me so much, even if we go weeks I you would know, go weeks yeah, without? Yeah, we'd weeks? Go, yeah, we'd go weeks. Wait, like three weeks? <laughs> Two <laughs> weeks? Then, then the longest was six weeks. <laughs> and you guys were not fighting? Yeah, no. We, he was spoiling me. Like, how can I even get upset? Um, he's the happiest guy ever. You know, oh. all he wants is to treat me like a lady, take me, um, book me massages, um, spoil me, take me out, you know. He was just amazing. Nine, six weeks were you not in dry? I, I would sometimes dress up here and there trying no, to... No, I mean like in dry seasons, you know, Matsuai, the salt. No, like the love was so much that I would um, tell myself, you know what, he's tired. Because sometimes if you touch him, you'll be like, um, I'm tired today. Then I'm like, okay, cool. But were you really okay with it? Yeah, I was okay, okay with it. I thought he's, he's just doesn't have a high, high, you know drive so i accepted that but six weeks yo i mean i would fight <laughs> but like seriously it, it, it could go up to that and wow. um, the only time i started now being um persistent on that was after i discovered he was cheating then i'm like oh it's because when uh, yeah you know and he would claim that he's not because i would find texts and stuff like that uh, and the fact that i never um saw got a conversation of him actually saying I'm busy or this at that time he tried to play the whole story of I'm just texting only I don't see these people but why would you want to ruin a whole marriage over texting if 
you propose a person just to text and then you want to ruin your whole marriage and you don't want to benefit anything out of it, you don't want to see, touch, like it doesn't make sense. But with all the messages that you saw, there was not a single one that you saw that would maybe show that there was a point where this, these people met and something happened? Yeah, some, there were some, some were there throughout since we were dating. Oh, wow. And mind you, when we were dating, this guy had time only for me. Yeah. So I couldn't understand where he was getting time to see. Would he give them money? Did you see anywhere where he gave money? Uh, I just saw the flowers and uh, lunch. I didn't see messages of money, so I wouldn't know if maybe... And I think at time, there's one who said thank you for at time. Um, I saw that one. So like, I never saw the only the money thing I only saw after when when I discovered the more cheating in the marriage later on. Um, that's when I saw okay, money came out now. You know, money came out on this day, but you know, those initial messages I didn't see. I saw the giftings and um, where you'd actually see them. And I remember obviously now when I'm seeing this day, he would say he's on standby. Um, and country the standby is another girl. <laughs> and uh, how we did it with the standby girls is he had a friend. I saw one of the conversation. He had a friend, and with the friend, he would tell this friend, listen, I'm going to go see this girl. And in two hours' time, please call me and tell me, and say that uh, they need me at work. So he was doing this during, this during work hours. That's why even when we were married, he left home on time, came back home on time. There was never in between way, um, except for that day that I mentioned that yeah. he came back late. He was always on consistent, so meaning that he had to squeeze these people during work hours. Because um, when you'd call me and say, babe, I'm going to a meeting at this place, but I'll be back probably in about two hours or so. If you need anything, text me. Um, if, you, if it's urgent, call. Um, if I can't respond, I'll text back. Uh, if there's anything, I'll get out of the meeting. And I'm sitting here thinking, I can't disturb someone who's in a meeting for two hours. What's so urgent? You know, and right after the two hours, he'll call and say, um, I'm leaving the meeting now. I'm going back to work. Is there anything that you need? Um, is there anything that's, um, you know, that I missed in the past two hours? I'm like, no, there's nothing. I'll see you when I get home. Yeah, so, now you're going to make me scared of these guys that are constantly <laughs> calling. Hi, my love. What are you doing there? Yeah, just checking up on you. Yeah, I was like, no, I was just checking. And where are you? I'm like, no, I'm still at work. I'm like, okay, cool. Have you gone out for lunch? Um, no, I just ordered in. Wait, is he the, was he the, have you eaten type? When I was dating, he brought me, that guy cared so much about my stomach, ne? That I was thinking to myself, nah, yeah, I've got lot almost like, you know, this person never wants to see me hungry. He would always order your Uber Eats, your pizzas, whatever, to bring to my office every day. Have you eaten? Um, not yet. Okay, I'm gonna order something for you. Um, order whatever you want and I'll pay for it, you know. Wow. So he, he was like that through and through. I never even got the chance to actually cook for him while we're still dating because he cared so much about my stomach more than I think myself because um, at that time when I met him I was on a diet and you know uh, and then when he came in I started thinking let me allow someone to do these things for me you know and um, I remember the first meal I cooked was when we were married staying together and I was so upset because I burnt that first meal for my husband. Wow. And I said to him, I cannot disappoint you like this, you know? And I remember him coming up to me and holding me and saying, no, my love, don't worry about it. You don't understand. Newlyweds. You know, he's like, you don't understand. You cooked for me. You're my wife. Like, I'm eating my wife's food and I'm going to eat this burnt food <laughs> with such pleasure. And he ate it up. I'm like, and I'm blessed, Shema. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, like this is just a bit much. Hey, I'm blessed. Okay, so let's 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 just fast That's forward fine. a bit. Um, obviously now he packs his things, he leaves. Mm. That's five months into you guys' marriage. Mm. Um, he obviously comes back. Yeah. You know, you guys fix things. Mm. How long did it take again for you to find out more? Okay, before I, I get to the part where how long did it get to, is um. With that, through the, through the messages, I saw that there was a woman also who was pregnant and then there was a baby, yes. And 
I couldn't believe or think something like that had happened because at that time I just had uh, suffered like a miscarriage um, a month before. Yeah, I suffered a miscarriage a month before and I was shocked. Like, is this his child or... Because he was talking a lot with his sister. She's sending pictures of this baby and like, oh, your son, your son is growing, your son is growing. So I'm like, Mara, this girl doesn't have a baby boy, you know? So... I didn't talk to him for some time and his family and everybody kept begging me to give him a chance and whatnot. Wait, sorry, sorry to, make, uh, to interrupt you. Was this five months in, into, the marriage. into the marriage, like the time that he left first? Yeah. Okay, when you were finding out everything, that's when you also I found, found out. out baby. Wow, okay. So meaning that when he married me, he, when he was dating me, he was dating another woman and then she fell pregnant and then he chose to marry me and the baby was born uh, as he was marrying me. <gasps> And his family knew. Knew, yeah. Papa and my in laws. And then they hid it. They didn't. Because <gasps> that's one of the issues that when eventually I did forgive him, because he came back, uh, asked the pastors, everybody, you know, everybody was involved and, you know, influence. And the one statement that I was told uh, from some of these counselings was um, if, um, <laughs> if you believe you're a sinner and you believe God has forgiven you, um, don't you? Why can't you also forgive your husband for this one uh, sin? That Fire he, that counselor. Yeah. Ma <laughs> Actually, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so that made me feel like, yo, maybe I'm being a bit of a hypocrite. Like, if God can forgive me, why can't I forgive him? That was the, my turning point, really. If it wasn't for that, um, I probably would have still stuck to my guns. Like, I cannot do this. So I forgave him, and um, through all of this, I got into went into depression, and uh, also ended up into in a psyche ward. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, was there? I mean, that's sad. Diagnosed with this depression, and um, then when I was there, he also wanted to come in, uh, and also said he's also struggling from depression that. He's doing all these things because of the traumas that he suffered as a young man and what he saw his father doing and basically blamed everything on his past. And I guess I looked at, he doesn't have a very good um, background, you know, this is what's causing him to do this. Let's forgive him because he is trying to be a good guy. He is actually very good to me, you know. So let's uh, actually forgive him. And he's trying to do better, you know. So did he end up also going into the mental... Yeah, he came, For how long? Uh, were there for two weeks? I just can't imagine. Like, I'm running away from you. You are my and depression. You me. And then your depression followed you. And, my, my, and I then... When I was there, I then realized he has this thing of um, how do I say that? Um, he needs to know my every move, what's going on, who am I talking to, what influence am I, you know, hence the always wanting to be around me, always wanting to know my circle. And the few friends I have, he would say bad things about them that I would leave them. Um, because they would say, ah, your husband is just trying to please you. He'll change this guy. He'll change. And I would tell him, you know. And I think with them, he's probably thinking, hey, God, they've caught on. Hey, that's the you problem. Know? When you are in love, you talk too much. Yeah, Because do. why did you even tell him what this one? My friends are saying, he was my best friend. I knew in that fact, feeling. But in fact, he told now. me that he's, he kept telling everyone that I'm his best friend, that I automatically just had to make him my best friend okay so you guys go into the mental um hospital together mm -hmm. and then you come back when you come back did things get better okay so obviously the first thing was to invite him back home i invited him home i think a week or two weeks back in um because we we're doing counseling and my counselor kept trying to get back me like please take him back take him back and when we came back you know when i thought my marriage was good initially it went times 100 better. <laughs> like, <laughs> I am telling you, like, I actually at, that, at some moment thanked the cheating, thinking, wow. I thought I had it good. It, what is better than good? Best As, test test. Yeah, it, it, yo, 
I've never in my life met someone work so hard to love and convince someone to a point that you would lose all doubt. And I remember telling him that I can never trust you ever again. I can never look at you the same. He's like, I'll work at it. He, he really did. worked at it. Now he got to a point that um, he would leave me with his location. Because I don't want to be a police. Every time he goes somewhere, he sends his uh, live location. The whole day, the phone would be on live location. So that I'm like, but this is so silly. You can sleep and leave your phone somewhere and still go see whoever you want to see, you know. But because I'm like, he's trying, you know. So that's when I thought, okay, let's let it go. And it became way better. The spoils, when I thought were good, I curry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was way better that um, at some point, right after he came back home, I started getting sick. Uh, I then started having some skin issues. And um, I remember telling him, because we're not even sharing the same bedroom. And then I told him that, listen, I'm starting to develop this um, condition. I don't know what it is. And he then said, no, go to the doctor, check it out. I went to the doctor. She said it could be some skin disease, but let's first give it some time. You know, and then I think I will talk more on that on um, the other video. So now back to when I um, took him back. Then after a couple of months, I think around seven, eight months or so, I felt pregnant again. And uh, one thing I know he always wanted was a child. And he'd always like vocalize it and say that he's going old, he's turning 40 and he still doesn't have his first child. Mind you, they're still the first baby. Né? And that first child, he came, one of the reasons I took him back is because he came clean about the child. And he mentioned that that child is not his. That's what he said. He believes that the girlfriend who he was sleeping with during that time, she had another boyfriend. So the child could be his or the boyfriend's. And the only reason that he was maintaining that child secretly behind my back was because he didn't want that woman to actually come and tell me that my husband has a child outside. So he was trying to keep her quiet by making sure every month. He sends money, money and he sends, he sends the pictures of the baby to his family yes. to see how. Yes. But do you guys see yes. how men think we're dumb? Yes. They make us look stupid. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. No, we really are. And I remember after a couple of months when I discovered I was pregnant and now um, the illness I, I was having was caused by the stress from the cheating and the baby and all of that, I realized I cannot afford stress and I cannot lose, afford to lose this child. I even thought if I give him this child, um, if I'm able to have this child, he will literally stop cheating, you know, because maybe it's cheating because we don't have a child together. So you kind of internalized the cheating. Yeah, yeah. You felt like it was because my I fault. can't. Yeah. Uh, and um, thought it's my fault, you know. And uh, I, re I remember I realized um, something is off. And I told myself I'm not going to check, you know. And, um, th you know, that thing is still there. It's still there. And this one time I was calling him and he didn't answer his phone for about two hours. And then he came up with some story about somebody took his phone home. And now the person had to come back from home and come back to the office to bring back his phone. And um, that's why he was missing. I mean, his phone was missing for two hours. I'm like, I called your office. Like, no, I was in the, in the warehouse. Uh, you know, it's a story. Was this when you were pregnant? Yeah. Okay. So I decided, I told myself that, listen, let it go. Do your best, let it go. But I couldn't. Do your best, let it go, because you lose this child and you have a skin condition that will flare up. You know. Um, so I tried, tried, tried. Then eventually I ended up approaching him and asking him about it. And I remember when he bought me the swatch, um, I then discovered that he was actually lying on how he bought the watch. He, he always tried to give me the impression that he does not leave work, because I couldn't know we've established that when he leaves work for these funny meetings, he's actually going to see girls. So now, he, even if he had to leave work, he tried to make me think that he's never left the yard. You know, that he couldn't even, he was struggling to even spoil me or buy stuff during the day because now, um, if I know he thinks, if I know that he lives, I would automatically think he went to see someone. And that's not how I was thinking. I saw that because now when I found out that he bought this, I asked him, can you tell me the truth? Did you go yourself or did someone else go? 
because he kept saying, I sent people to go and buy for you, what doesn't, but his story was not making sense, you know. Then I said to him, you know, when you keep lying and I know you're lying and you keep, it's making me feel like there's a lot more that you're hiding and it's actually stressing me out and I don't want to be stressed right now, you know. Then eventually it's like, okay, you know what, it's not worth it. Let me tell you the truth. I went myself. I don't want you thinking this way and whatnot. When you're honest with me, there's no need for you to lie and make up stories. You know, even if a situation is bad, just tell it. That way it's easier to deal with it, um, unlike lying about it. And um, after that, I looked at my son is here. I'm, I'm going to be breaking a family. Should... Um, should I leave the marriage? I'm getting this child inside me, you know? And um, I forgave him again. He made all the promises in the world and whatnot. And um, he tried his best to be that Mr. Lover guy again. <laughs> and um, then I lost that child, right? So this was your second miscarriage? Yeah. Okay. And then I lost that child again. And then um, towards December, I was pregnant again. Guys, I was pregnant throughout my whole marriage. Okay. <laughs> pregnant, losing the baby. Pregnant, losing the marriage. I am I mean, so the baby. sorry for that, by oh, the way. It's okay. I realized that uh, it wasn't meant to be with what has happened yeah. and transpired, you know. Because um, I kept asking God, like, why do I fall pregnant so easy? Because we we'll start trying a baby to, like today, next month I'm pregnant, you know. But I wouldn't carry full term. It's either the baby's going to strangle herself, you know, something is going to happen. And um, I then realized that I'm not supposed to have ties with this person. Yeah. Um, because I'm seeing that now through the divorce that he's just trying to fight for everything that he can. At some point he was uh, even brought up that... Um, what do we do about my son? I mean, he's my son, you know. And I'm thinking, imagine if it was his child. He was going to try so hard to stay in my life because of this the child. The child, yeah. Um, so. I know that you also spoke about your, your hand. Yeah. Um, I do not want us to actually rush this interview because I feel like, you know, the part where... Um, she's going to be talking about her skin condition. That's where we actually want to like go deep in, um, you know, so that we can hear the causes, like what they told you, what actually helped you. Um, and just so that we can obviously educate out there. So what I'm going to actually do is that we are going to have a part two um, where we're going to go in there, we're going to talk about what happened to your hand. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about what's going on during the divorce right now. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to talk about your skin condition, which I feel like everyone out there is just going to be shocked. Because for some of you guys <laughs> that do not know, Val is actually one of my friends. And so I know some of this stuff. But some of the stuff I'm also like finding out today, that's why I'm shocked. I'm like, girl, what do you mean, you know? But um, yeah, I want to go ahead and say thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and I know that everyone will be waiting for a part two. So you better promise them, promise them. <laughs> I promise I'll make time. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I will, I'll be back and we can continue. We can this. continue. Yeah. So it's not a goodbye. It's definitely just bye for now. Yeah. We'll see you guys in part Two. two so please do go ahead and comment down below what you guys think of this um you know story and please tell us you know have you had someone actually love bomb you because i've not actually had someone that was love bombed throughout the relationship and even into marriage love bombed even in there but one last question okay no let's um, not can i just say um the reason i call it love bombing mm -hmm. is because the person i'm dealing with now is not even close to the same person that, that you were with. Yes. Especially the moment that you realize he's lost his grip on me. Mm -hmm. I know the real person came that even when he was still trying to convince me to come back, I kept thinking of what I've seen now. Ne? I, I can never unsee. Mm. I can never go. This is the real person. Considering that I keep saying, 
when something is too good to be true, ne? I know. It probably is. No, it, it I is. think that they say that you do not know who you're married to until you have to divorce them. Mm. But anyway, ninjas, um, yeah, as I said, this is bye for now. I will definitely see you guys in our next upload. Please don't forget to comment down below. Have you ever been love bombed? Um, what happened? You know, tell us and share your dating details or stories. Um, from Muami Nechipazoru, I love you guys. And this is me signing out. And I will see you guys in my next upload. Yeah. Mwah! Bye. Bye. The love was true. He took it to the places I see never went to. Things went wrong when he told them what to do and how to do it. He chose friends for her and what to tell him. And where to go. Then he started being a control freak. And he used to call the names like Shnip. Oh, I tell you who does it. And the problem is so 